Hello? Hello! Welcome back everyone to another Hearts of Iron 4 with the pony mod, I guess. Well, I mean, yeah. And today we're gonna play as uh, Bird Chiang Kai-shek. Because why the fuck not? To be, com to be completely fucking honest, why the fuck not? Um... Yeah, this is not gonna be like a super highly polished series. This is just gonna be me playing and derping around. Um, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be one of those content. Uh, actually, it's unfortunate that I'm not like rendering this and editing because then I would have like a you know a cool like animation, like a big brain thing like this, just with content coming. Yeah, whatever. Um, yeah, so we're playing as the Griffonian Republic, and uh, there's this massive fucking wall of text, but you should pause and read this. Uh, I read this before starting. I don't want to read too much, even though there's going to be quite a lot of reading, especially in the first episodes. Uh, basically, um, Chiang Kai-shek over here was like, damn, I'm an Imperial Marshal, you know, in the Griffonian Empire. Then things started to go bad with the Griffonian Empire. He tried to rise up and, uh, you know, become the president of the Griffonian Republic. It worked, but then it didn't work. There was a counter-revolution. We escaped, uh, and we escaped to the Duchy of Cloudberry, where the young Duke Otto Plumenjar II was attempting to rebuild the Imperial Province. And, uh, but he was fucked. And our forces marching north rallied the peasants, integrated them into the Republican military, and struck at the Duchy of Cloudberry. And uh, we lynched him and his wife, based, based, along with killing his only son, Frederick, to ensure Republican rule remained in the province, based, holy shit, how based are we? Anyway, uh, Oscar Plumenjar, the uncle of Otto, fled north into the northern tribes with the remaining monarchists, and over there they are seething, I'm guessing. And uh, now we have our little sort of exile, se semi-exile republic, and uh, yeah, the republican dream burns in our hearts, and uh, we shall ensure liberty, prosperity, and democracy for all, of course. So, uh, there's also like a trillion um, the history of the republican struggles event, which I suppose I should read at some point. I suppose, uh, but uh, I'm not sure that I'm ever gonna have time for that uh, on screen, but I should definitely read it at the very least so I'm aware of, you know, the lore or whatever. Uh, should I do this? Yeah, I think I should be doing some of these racial technologies, which of course everybody loves, uh, everybody loves it when it's racial. Oh, we only have uh, one civilian factory. Hmm, that's uh, not very good. Anyway, uh, dockyards, I'm sure we have. Oh, we actually do have like early cruisers and shit. Sure, let's, let's do submarines. And, uh. <clears throat> yeah, I need steel. So give me one steel, Equestria. With my one civilian factory, I shall get steel so we can produce guns. Anyway, we have the unruly military to begin with um, as a bit of an issue. Uh, now, the unruly military has been a major problem in the Republic ever since the Revolution. Uh, as you can see, the unruly army over here. Suntail's troops. Now, Suntail is some general. Yeah, Reinhard Suntail. Uh... Bit of a dick, ain't he? Um, have caused thousands of casualties in the bloodthirsty attempts to rid the countryside of bandits. And uh, Rosewing, another general, uh, Klaus Rosewing, with an eye patch. Uh, that's how you tell he's supposed to be cool. Has been accused of looting Republican towns and villages for supplies for his army. This behavior is unacceptable and must be stopped. However, there are two solutions to such a thing. Schnabel Sunglider, Schnabel Sunglider, a political idealist and one of Kamerskai's closest advisors, says that the military should be rebuilt and rebellious commanders sacked, so that the military will be the same standard of the Griffonian army. Heinrich Kingfeder, 
However, the pragmatist has dismissed this, claiming that the best course of action is the swiftest, merely placating the generals. Okay, I have been... I have been told that apparently, if you go... I'm guessing it's this path, because this path later down the line leads to... Oh, you can actually do the revolution secured with... Uh, or you can actually do this with revolution secured as well. Huh, okay. Well, then we can just do the, the placating the military, to be honest. Maybe? Hmm. Yeah, because I've been told that if you don't fuck with Suntail too hard, apparently, and, and you allow elections at some point, apparently his path is, like, really, really cool once you retake uh, the capital and load a new focus stream. Uh, holy shit. Hmm. Okay, so here you remove them. Okay, I guess so. I should I should just like role play Chiang Kai Shek, I suppose, and just play game them. Okay. Uh, ooh, I'm gonna do a bit of a warlord era, don't we? Anyway, uh, so with this country, the Cold Stream Summit. With this country, you have three main paths at the beginning. Either the plot, um, well, the, the plot is one of them. So you remove the current ruler. Camera Sky, Chiang Kai Shek, or you know, whatever. Um, so you remove Chiang Kai Shek, and uh, you have the Battle of Cloudberry and the Republican victory, and then you get to be. You get to be either the left or the leftists, uh, or the civilian government. Hmm. That's a pretty good. Uh, that's a pretty good modifier. Give me that. Or uh, you go with uh, Chiang Kai Shek, which of course, of course we, of course we're gonna support Chiang Kai Shek. <laughs> what kind of channel is this if we don't support Chiang Kai Shek? Uh, and you either reform the military and remove the warlords, or you placate the warlords and uh, you avert the crisis. And then I suppose we can still enforce uh, the civilian government. Or maybe still go for the martial law. Hmm. Yeah, I could just go for the civilian government, which, to be honest, it's not full Chiang Kai Shek roleplay, but I'm fairly certain it does not destroy my chances to do funny things later down the line. So, and uh, then you have uh, the recover from warlordism. Hmm. Ah, uh -huh. you get a bunch of, uh, of course, Wing Barty. You get a bunch of superior firepower if you go with Marshall Camera Sky. Rocket artillery based? Ah, uh, but it's a 100% research bonus. It's not a... It's not a, um... Whatchamacallit. It's not a, 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 a head of time research bonus, which is a bit of an issue. Oh well, whatever. Okay, so I'm getting this to go for... Where is... Uh, daily political... Ooh, Suntail's little bird. Acceptance of supremacist diplomacy. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just looking for some extra political power gain. This should give us 0 0.20. But it also gives us a bunch of, like, useless things. At least at the beginning. Oh, political power gain plus 15%. Hell yeah. Yeah, of course, I, I know that at the beginning of the game, the political power is going to be a bit of an issue, so I'm trying to shore that up. How's our army looking? Okay, so we have uh, one reserve division with 10 infantry. 
six with militia, which is pretty disgusting. Or Republican Infantry Division with, wow, artillery. Incredible. And six, uh, yeah, 12 with six battalions of infantry. And then we have a Mountain Division. Oh, boy. Um, okay. So our army is uh, shit, to be completely honest. Our army is complete garbage. Okay. This gives us army experience. Ooh, and military factories. Hell yeah. Okay. Well, over here we get... Okay, so it looks like the camera sky thing is mostly about research bonuses. Well, oh damn, this is like the best one, isn't it? You just got 1,000 guns and two more factories. Yeah, but like mass assault is shit. So, uh, yeah, fuck you. This is grand battle plan. Don't particularly care for grand battle plan. Yeah, I'm liking the superior firepower the most. So getting the wisdom of Marshall Camera Sky doesn't sound that bad. And here you get 500 rifles. And even utilize the crystals. Ooh, nice. Okay. Understandable. Let's first get these research bonuses. And once we do not have banditry, we can even do education. Absolutely fucking incredible. Oh, you even get an Auferstanden Ausruinen focus. Hell yeah. Amazing. Absolutely fucking fantastic. Oh, I can't be the spam. Uh, I can't probably edit my army because of the unruly army, right? How do I remove unruly army? The worst is over. Good. All right. So, do I pause and come back when something else is going on probably the steel trade with equestria was terminated because of the lack of civilian factories well you little fucking bitch that's probably because of the bribes right what is the grs imperative one of our newest destroyer models has yesterday gone missing after falling to report in while on maneuvers bro that's kind of cringe isn't it uh, the destroyer appeared again gliding on a thick fog. The destroyer was completely unmanned on arrival. Is that a random event? That's, that feels random eventy. Ooh. Let's do some speeches, sure. Oh, it's just... It's actually good. Okay. Camera Sky speech on Bicolini. Damn. Apparently we hate uh, the fascists. Even though... Wait, what? Even though in real life, Chiang Kai-shek loved fascism. So... Ahistorical. And, uh... Camera Sky speech on the failures of Grover. Yeah, well, the old Grover is dead. All right, see you in a little bit. Hello again. So you may notice that we have no music, and that's because we have an event about music, the Anthem debate. Uh, now, I have uh, completed uh, this part here with the Crisis Averted. Uh, so now we can actually do things with our army, but we've got no army experience, blah, 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 civilian government. We actually established the Sun Glider cabinet, um, which is centrist, uh, and it's actually pretty based. Now, unfortunately, this means that we're not, not aligned anymore, but it's actually pretty based because it just gives us a million military factories for pretty much no real reasons also. 
it is uh, basically an ultra nationalist kind of business because uh, our dreams of aspirations of a global pangraphonia. So you're basically just chauvinist because you you teach the Hertzlander dialect, which is basically like the language that the birds speak here, to the, well, you know, the natives of a far-flung province of the Empire. And there's even the language issue. Um, like, currently, most of the population over here is not... It, it, it's kind of like Taiwan, where there's a bunch of people from mainland China and... Uh, then there's the people who uh, have been living in Taiwan for generations, and uh, when the when the Chinese nationalists fled to Taiwan, they even had a bit of a massacre moment where they had to deal with basically nativist resistance to their rule, uh, because they were like, "Well, you ain't that different from the Japanese. You're still outsiders coming in." Now, the anthem debate before it goes away. Uh, we can choose between three different anthems. The tricolor, which is the red flag, uh, if you know the the so the anthem of the British Labour Party, you know, though cowards flinch and traitors near, sneer, we'll keep the tricolor flying here, and it's the party anthem of the National Republican Party, which is pretty nice. Uh, unity and justice and freedom, and it gives us harmony support and uh, war support. Unity and justice and freedom gives us stability, and it's... The third stanza of the popular song Das Lied der Grafonien. So I'm guessing it's basically like the modern German anthem. Yeah, with the unity and justice and Einigkeit und Freiheit and all that. Um, but the one we're going to choose is Risen from Ruins, of course. Uh, which is the East German anthem. Which is the re the reason why I didn't have uh, oh this is pretty loud. The reason why I didn't have the game music on is so that we can listen to it while we go forward, which of course is the what we're going to choose. Now this is completely like weird, but I like it uh, because the East German anthem is like unironically just really really good. It's just amazing. Um, I hope you're I hope it's like not too. Ooh, the Predean Republic. What the hell? What the hell is going on over here? Looks like uh, the Aquileans went monarchy? Hmm. That's kind of cringe. Uh, but they're having their own issues. Oh, the 30th anniversary of the Republican Revolution. We'll come back, we swear. Well... The Grafonian Empire is beginning to fall apart with the Strawberry Duchy and the Grand Duchy of Fithesia uh, breaking free from central influence because um, the current leader is the Archon, which means that they went with the Council uh, and then the Archon. So obviously now the Duchess is angry, blah, blah, blah. Also, I'm guessing that most of the other Imperial uh, protectorates or you know vassals are, are doing the oh he's just he's just being cringe are doing their own thing. The Katerin Troye prevails. Hmm. Ah, this seems like it's the monarchist path. So we have a couple monarchists. This is always weird. And uh, the Central University. Oh no, he's also going with the boring. So actually, we might have like a really strong Archon Empire to overcome at some point. Well, I mean, that's like bad-ish, but like, th there's, there's worse, to be honest. Now, I am going with the Wisdom of Marshall Kemersky, of course, to get myself some epic um, artillery bonuses. And uh, hopefully, somewhat soon, I can get myself some resources to be honest because I see that the big problem really with my country at the moment is the fact that we have no goddamn steel uh, and no goddamn tungsten but especially steel because to be honest we, we have quite a few military factories it's just 
the problem is um also anthem's over let's hope that youtube is not gonna do anything dumb okay back to the equestria at war music You know, the music volume is pretty low. There we go. Uh, back to the Equestria War music, and... Uh, yeah, give me this, I think. So, where can we get ourselves some steel? Skynavia and uh, Vadina. Vadina especially. So, I'm guessing, where can I get myself Vadina? Oh, it's quite a bit down there. And where can I get myself, um, whatchamacallit? Steel? It does not appear I can get myself steel anywhere. So, this really just needs to be, like, the priority at the moment. So, I'm not gonna, quote-unquote, waste too long on uh, the military focuses even though even though I really would like to finish the air force because it gives me free aircraft and uh, at the moment we only have 20 fighters yeah I really wish I'm gonna get some like decisions I guess to push in here before before the Brafonian Empire consolidates too hard but yeah, I get myself my superior firepower doctrine bonuses, and I'm just gonna basically barrel down to try to get the end of Vadina. Gains an annex war goal against uh, the kingdom of Vadina. And in the meantime, I'm gonna be building up my army and trying to do my business. But uh, yeah. So I'll see you in a little bit. Actually, um, it's, it's been 20 minutes. I can end the episode. Um, next up, I'm gonna be further down. Maybe I'm gonna have the parliamentary elections, and then I'm gonna be recording again. And hopefully, hopefully the despicable Imperials don't get too strong too quickly, because it's gonna take a while for us to ramp up. I'm I can already see this. Uh, being the case. So, uh, yeah. I hope you've enjoyed this first... Uh, field hospital. No, engineer company. Hope you've enjoyed this first episode. And, uh, yeah. want to thank you all for watching. Hope you've enjoyed. And I'll see you soon.